Good morning, everybody. Welcome to church. Let's stand together and sing to the Lord this morning. Feel free to put your hands together. Dance around your living room this morning. Let's get, let's get in it. I was lost with a broken heart. You picked me up, now I'm set apart. From the ash I was born again. Forever safe in the Savior's hands. You are more than my words could say. Follow you, Lord, for all my days. Fix my eyes, follow in your ways. Forever free and unending grace. Cause you are, you are, you are my freedom. We lift you higher, lift you higher. You love, you love, you love never ending. Oh, oh, oh. You are life in us. Nothing can take your place. You, oh, oh, we need your love has set us. darkest night let your love be the shining light breaking chains that were holding me send your son down and set me free everything in this world will fade pressing on till I see your face I will live that your will be done I won't stop till your kingdom come we sing cause you are you are that this morning he is all we need we are alive in him this morning so you are my freedom cuz you are you are you are my freedom we lift you higher lift you higher you love you love you love never ending oh 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 our life in us nothing can take your Continue to sing together this morning. Let's continue to clap and sing together. Sing, I was buried. I was buried beneath my shame. And who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn Till I met you I was breathing by God Alive All my failures I tried To hide It was 
was my tune Till I met you You called my name And I ran out of that We celebrate this morning for what he has done for us. I needed rescue, my sin was heavy, but chains break out the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now you're is the air that I'm breathing I have a future My eyes are open Cause when you call my name See it And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day. Lift up a shout of praise. Amen. Welcome to worship today. We're so glad that you're here and worshiping with us online. A lot of has happened since I actually videotaped the first welcome and introduction for this Sunday services. And the president uh, has uh, announced that worship centers, synagogues, mosques are all essential industries now and that we should be thinking about opening up. That along with the uh, over 2,000 churches in California that have committed to open up on May 31st is uh, moving Church of the Valley into a position where we are seriously considering how to open up the church. We have a plan in place and uh, we have uh, sharp people, Dr. Tom, uh, Casey, Sam Rice, uh, who's a medical doctor, and others who are guiding us along with the CDC has issued an 18-page guideline for churches. So we have signs in place, we have masks on site, we have sanitation uh, products available, and uh, currently you have, or should have received in the email, a survey to take about what kind of worship services you would be interested in. 
we want to offer to Church of the Valley the worship venues that you would like to see. We think that there's probably two or three different uh, choices that people want to make, and uh, we want to honor those choices by providing worship. Our goal at Church of the Valley is to help every member worship God and to also grow in discipleship. So that is the work your staff and your elders will be uh, going uh, through this week. So pray for us as we seek to lead. And also watch your email and other communication vehicles. Um, talk with your deacons if you don't have um, access to uh, online uh, communication and uh, other deacons will be in touch. And for those of you who know people who aren't, are not uh, kind of internet savvy, uh, once you hear things, please give them a call and let them know what's going on as Church of the Valley looks at restarting as early as, uh, well, we'll be restarting person-to-person -person worship or face-to-face -to -face worship um, in as possibly as soon as May 31st. So that's what we're looking at seriously, and we'll let you know more information. So with that said, a lot of exciting things going on. And we pray that uh, this would be a great worship day today, Memorial Day weekend. And so let's uh, worship the Lord. Join me in prayer, please. Dear God, be with us. Be with all of the churches and synagogues, mosques, people of faith who are trying to do the right thing. Uh, we pray especially for churches that are seeking to honor you, dear Lord. And many of us are eager to be together face to face. Protect us, we pray. Uh, watch over us help people who are afraid to come out to feel okay about staying home. Uh, Lord, there's a lot of fear out there, and as we move ahead, uh, help uh, Church of the Valley and other churches uh, help to flatten the fear, uh, flatten the fear curve, uh, because it's a fearful time for many. So Lord, you are our good shepherd, and uh, we shall not want, and you give us so much in life. And we uh, pray uh, with the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Um, welcome to worship. Welcome to worship. Well, let's continue to sing together this morning about our living hope in Christ. How great the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ, my living hope Who could imagine So great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me His own Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever Jesus Christ, my living hope Oh, hallelujah, 
praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living the promise your buried body began to break out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me sing that again then came the morning then came the morning that sealed the promise your very body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me and jesus yours is the victory Oh, hallelujah, praise the one who set me free, hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me, you have broken every chain, there's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope, hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free, hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, my only hope. So, Father, I just thank you this morning for, for the hope that you give us. In the midst of a global pandemic, you are our hope, God. You are our peace. When our anxiety, when our fear, when our overthinking takes over you are peace God you are in control of it all you are our hope and no matter the chasm that is between us the the mountain that we can't climb you are there to meet us in the middle God I just thank you for that be with us this morning let us draw closer to you let us learn from your word and through the words of Pastor Jan this morning and just guide us, guide our hearts, God. Allow us to not be afraid, allow us to not resort to anger or frustration as a result of fear and let us result to love and peace this is what you taught us, God. We thank you, we love you, we praise in Jesus' name and all God's people say, amen. So today we're going to take a look at Isaiah chapter 6 verses uh, 1 through 8 and many of no us know this as uh, the time that Isaiah is called and it's a it's a very challenging scripture because he receives a call to ministry he becomes aware of his sins we'll see that as well he he confesses that he's not worthy and then he receives his first sermon delivered to him by God and I can remember when I was ordained back in 1975. I mean, we had an ordination service. It was really fun. My family was there, but we didn't have uh, the kind of experience that Isaiah had, and I'm kind of glad. Um, and then God did not show up and give me my first sermon. And after hearing this sermon, 
Uh, I'm not sure back in 1975 that I would have discovered the richness of this sermon. And so um, let's pay attention and uh, look at scripture. As we come to church and as we come to worship, uh, a lot of us refer to God in different ways. You've had friends who refer to God. Uh, they get caught and they say, oh, uh, the Lord's watching me, or they'll talk about uh, the big guy, or you know who upstairs. Uh, this the sense of God out there, and even um, uh, people who say, oh my God, they, even if they don't know God, they're still sensing that there's something bigger and surprising in life. And here we will meet this surprising God. And the first point we're going to discover is God is both transcendent and imminent. God is far above us, but also close to us. Big and above, near and close. And so Isaiah 6, 1 through 8 goes like this. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, with two they were flying, and they were calling to one another, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. So Isaiah tells us a whole bunch of things about God right here in this moment. God and his fantastic arrival and appearance as Isaiah experiences him. Uh, he sees God, majesty. There's a sense of majesty. I saw the Lord sitting on the throne high and lofty. And there's a greatness to God. There's a greatness to God. The hem of his robe filled the temple. I mean, just the hem. Uh, think of that. Isaiah trying to put into words his encounter with God. There's a supremacy uh, to God. There were angels there in attendance and worshiping him and singing. Now that's going to be some choir that we'll get to hear one day. And then there's holiness to God. The song itself is holy, holy, holy. Uh, this, this righteousness and perfection of God. And then there's a glory to God. Uh, the scripture says the whole world is filled with his glory. So transcendent means God is holy and glorious, high above us. When we sing or hear the Messiah by handle, or sing holy, 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 or even the quiet little songs uh, and praise music, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Um, it is, reminds us that God is above us. Uh, God is magnificent beyond description. God is good beyond description. God is powerful beyond description, and God is holy and uh, completely independent of creation. God creates creation, and God then, we discover, is imminent. God is also close. God's involvement with humanity is not a result of some unmet godly need, but rather a result of his affection and his choice and his love for the human race. And so what happens next is Isaiah experiences God and he goes, God arrived, oops, now God's looking at me, I am just not worthy of this at all. And here's Isaiah's simple confession, and this could be a prayer of confession to, for any one of us. Isaiah says, woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Wow, what a great word for our season and the life of the country and in our own lives. Our lips just drip with foulness. Uh, swearing is a normal part of life out in the world. And we as Christians try and hold the line, but it's hard out when the, the world is not holding theirs. And we're among a, a people of unclean lips. Um, whether you're a, a Trump person or a Biden person or a Bernie Sanders person, I really don't care. But all of these lips are unclean. They're abusive of others. It's always making fun of others. Um, we're just unclean in our communication. 
and our communications are flawed. We have free press, but it's free to be right and wrong, confusing, helpful, propaganda or truthful. And uh, what is a person to do? But here, like Isaiah, probably one of the first things to do is to recognize it's part of the problem is me too. Like Isaiah, I am a person of unclean lips. My communication with others is not loving and kind all the time and clear and concise. And uh, so that's a whole other sermon we could have about communication, but uh, this sermon is about God and about what God does in the world. And so um, we have this uh, idea of uh, uh, coals um, comes along. God is imminent, though transcendent. God is imminent and deals with Isaiah. He deals with an individual person. And that's good news for us. God comes and deals with you and with me. God really cares what you think. God hears our prayer of confession. And God, in this case, responds. And God sends help. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And this is lovely language. Sin atoned for. Your sin has been paid for. And even here we have just a glimpse of uh, the future uh, from Isaiah's perspective, there is going to be one, namely Jesus, who will atone for the sins of the world. All the past sins, all the future sins, Jesus does it all. So sin atoned for. That's good news for you and I, men and women. Uh, this morning, if you feel like you're far from God and you're just not good enough for God, guess what? You're not. But God is showing up, and God is good enough for you, and God wants you. And all you have to do is confess and say, Lord God, help me. And do it from your heart, deep in your heart, and he'll cleanse you. There's someone who has already paid the price. And you shouldn't be paying the price of ongoing guilt and not forgiving yourself and becoming uh, just depressed by life. No, Jesus paid it all. What part of all does not include you or me? Jesus paid it all. And then it moves on to this wonderful, uh, this wonderful thing that Isaiah says. Um, after, well, Isaiah is listening now uh, because he's listening. His mouth has been um, uh, touched with this coal. And uh, then this is what Isaiah does. He's listening. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And Isaiah said, Here I am. Send me. Isn't that great? Here I am. Send me. Now i got to tell you, this is an ordination service. Uh, we still need to ordain and install our incoming elders and deacons. Uh, we got caught up with this coronavirus, but one of the first things we'll do when we're all together is we're going to install and ordain our elders and deacons. Um, now, that, this is an ordination, ordination service, let me tell you. Uh, smoke, angels, flying coals, God speaking. I tell you, I think I'd remember that ordination service. Because I'm thinking back and I'm not, I can remember the preacher because Earl Palmer was kind enough to come and preach. Uh, but I can't remember what we sang. I can't even remember what we had in the fellowship hall for the, for the buffet that the Women's Association put on. But I do remember it was special. I do remember it was special. And the church brought me a robe, which was nice. Because out of seminary, I was... I was dirt poor broke. So, God comes and touches. And uh, don't you love that? It just reminds us of, uh, again, my favorite painting in the, in the back here uh, of, uh, of the hand of God touching the hand of man, the hand of humankind. And here again, we have another touching of God touching a human being. So then Isaiah uh, goes on to listen to God. 
So now God gives the sermon. We've talked about the transcendence of God, the eminence, God is eminent, uh, encountering people, and now God is delivering uh, the message. What message is Isaiah, is Isaiah going to deliver to the people of his age? And here's the message. God says, go and tell this people, be ever hearing, but never understanding. Be ever seeing, but never perceiving. Make the heart of this people calloused. Make their ears dull and close their eyes. Hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn to be healed. They might do that, and I don't want that. Then I said, Lord, how long? How long do you want this? And God answered, until the cities lie ruined without inhabitant, until the houses are left deserted and the fields ruined and ravaged, until the Lord has sent everyone far away and the land is utterly forsaken. And though a tenth remains in the land, I will again be laid waste. But as the terebinth and oak leave stumps when they are cut down, so the holy seed will be the stump in the land. The Sermon of Stumps. I read this uh, many years ago and I just hated this. I hated this. The sense of failure, of, of, of things not going well, of God's people uh, being driven from cities, um, becoming refugees. It, it's, it's just this sad, sad story of people who keep forgetting about God. Stumps. And though a tenth remains in the land, I will again be laid waste. But as the terebinth and the oak leave stumps when they are cut down, so the holy seed will be the stump in the land. This is God's promise that he will never leave us no matter how bad things look. God will make a way. God is a way maker. God makes a way. And even if we don't see it, God sees it and will make a way. Because out of these stumps, new growth will come. And you've seen it. You can see it in this slide. And that describes America, men and women. The history of America is a bunch of stumps. That's who we have always been, just a bunch of stumps. This nation was founded by people seeking religious freedom. They called them pilgrims. Pilgrims are seekers for God. Just a bunch of stumps. That's part of why I love this uh, group of 1,200, uh, 2,000 churches and their pastors. Uh, planning to worship on, on Sunday. They're just stumps, but they want to bring new life. They want to bring new life. I so respect that. But think of them, pilgrims coming over in the Mayflower. You know, they came over in these wooden ships, just a bunch of stumps. None of them were great. They were just refugees. A hundred people packed in a deck half the space, half the space of Church of the Valley Sanctuary. Stumps. But there was a holy seed inside, you know, a seed of religious freedom. And by the time 1776 came around, by a bridge in Concord, these stumps had become freedom fighters. And then these stumps was the stumps of freedom, the seed for freedom that men and women were yearning for. No, since uh, all of Europe and all of the places they were coming from were just filled with tyranny and kings and queens and uh, draconian laws, and no freedom for their worship. We're coming up um, on Memorial Day uh, tomorrow is actually Constitution Day. We do, I think we need more holidays in our calendars. But Constitution Day is the 25th of May, and that's a day that the Con Constitutional Convention um, uh, met and started their 100-day work to write the Constitution of the United States of America. And so Constitution Day, think about it. 11 years later in 1787, um, that was when the, con the Continental Congress met and began to write this great document that was approved by the September of that year 
and then a little following that, the Bill of Rights, where we have the First Amendment, um, which is uh, our treasure, freedom of religion, freedom of assembly. You know, if you think about it, that's some great birthing out of just a bunch of stumps, isn't it? You know, there's, there is a why to all this battle. If you think back to like the Athens of Plato and Socrates, or the Florence, the city of Florence when da Vinci was there, or even the city of London when Shakespeare was there, these were impressive places. But none of those places are nearly as history altering as the, Phil the Philadelphia of the American rebels. Because right then on May 25, these stumps started this convention that wrote a constitution. It is the most readable, practical guide to liberating and freeing people to bring them together in a way of governing of the people, by the people, and for the people. And men and women, um, it's worth reading on Constitution Day. Normally I tell you to go home and read your Bible. Hey, tomorrow, Memorial Day, Read the Constitution, and if that's too long, read the, read the Declaration of Independence. That's a good way to remember what all of those men and women uh, fought and died for that we remember tomorrow. We see the Constitution as a beginning for our country, but the Founding Fathers, it was a last stump-filled chance to start something new. A total of 55 delegates gathered from across our young nation with a mission. The states were weak. They were trapped in hostile trade and border disputes between them. They were encircled by European empires that wanted to come back in and conquer them again. They were sunk in an enormous economic depression after eight years of revolutionary war. Eight years. We're complaining because we've locked, we're locked in our houses for eight weeks. Well, at least I am. Probably not you. So there they were in a in, in uh, Philadelphia on a hundred sweltering summer days, and it almost didn't work. You know, the Constitution almost didn't come out of that assembly. Nobody was happy. There was no one who was happy. There were way too many compromises. And everybody was compromising. And you know what happens in compromise? No one gets what they want. And then finally, uh, at a decisive moment in the conversation, 81-year-old Benjamin Franklin stood up. Think about this, 81 years old. He stood up and he pleaded with the delegates, and this is, I quote, have a quote um, of his little speech. He said, every member here who may still have objections to it, meaning everybody, would you please with me on this occasion doubt a little of his own infallibility and suppress tolerable disagreements for a higher unity. And that turned the tide of the conversation. So in talk, instead of talking about how the individual states could survive, they started to talk about how they could be united and to become united states. Instead of states fighting they were going to become united around freedom and liberty. Just stumps, but there was a holy seed there. Ever think of Benjamin Franklin as a holy seed? Pull out your money, he's still on your money. Well, it didn't stop there. It was still tough slogging. 25 years later, by 1812, when the British tried to take over the USA again, they were uh, citizen soldiers volunteering for the army, just stumps going up against uh, one of the strongest navies and armies of the world at that time. And then just a few years later, by the, 48 years later really, by the 1860s, uh, they were just stumps again when our land was torn by a horrible civil war, stumps confronting the evils of slavery, fighting that all men and women might be free, stumps. But in those stumps, again, a seed of hope and blessing and freedom and liberty. Fifty years later, by 1911, they were our young men and women, just stumps in World War I. 
soldiers marching off, who returned from a free land to help a loving people in Europe end a war, a war that was enslaving them again. In 1919, Woodrow Wilson staked his presidency on a League of Nations, uh, the League of Nations which the U.S. never joined, another stump and another dream of peace, people dreaming for a better world. By 1940, those stumps were young men and women drafted into service or volunteering to put down two dictators that threatened the freedom of all people of this world. Ten years later, by 1957, they were stumps at the 38th par parallel during the cold and hot wars, uh, war years of fighting in Korea, and then again in Vietnam, they were men and women who gave their lives for freedom to stem the tide of communist dictatorships. Then the war went cold. Still those stumps kept showing up. John Kennedy at the Berlin Wall saying, Ich bin ein Berliner. All free men, wherever they may live, are citizens of Berlin. And therefore, as a free man, I take pride in the words, Ich bin ein Berliner. And tried to let the USSR at the time know that the wall was not a way to um, control their people. And then uh, a few years later, uh, Nixon goes to China. And only Nixon could go to China. Only Nixon could go to China. Uh, just this radical anti-communist who would go to China and start uh, opening up this uh, communist country uh, to uh, trade and uh, ongoing conversation. Uh, China has been a, a challenge for us for many years. There is an old Vulcan proverb. Only Nixon could go to China. And then in 1987, President Reagan went to the wall Kennedy stood before, 20 years before, and uh, initiated a time of mass freedom and liberty in Europe. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. But still, we're just a bunch of stumps. Recently, our young men and women have twice gone to the Persian Gulf once to liberate a country from a dictatorship, and recently and still now to cut the staging area uh, for terrorism that was Afghanistan and now Iraq and Syria. Uh, that's just stumps out there fighting for us. Liberty and freedom are not free. They cost something. They cost something. You and I are not entitled to freedom. Did you know that? It not, it's not something that comes as a birthright or ge geography or race. Freedom is rather what others have given their lives for that we might be privileged to live in it. It's not a right. People have given it to us. And then finally, this image of stump in Isaiah comes to its fruition in the stump of Jesse. Jesus arises from, in prophecy, from the stump, which is Jesse, his grandfather. Freedom from sin starts with Jesus, who is the holy seed of Israel, born as a stump, a fully God, fully human stump. So if you think that you're a redwood or a terebinth this morning, just remember you're just a stump. If you think you own the city and run the country club, and control the church, you're just a stump. If you think you really understand everything, just remember you're just a stump. But stumps all have within them a holy seed, a life that can bring up and remake and renew the land. And that's the eminence of God in the life and heart of the fully uh, follower of Jesus, human being. God with us, God beside us. When we come to worship, we remember the hymn, He walks with me and he talks with me, and he tells me I'm his own. That's who we are. Stumps turned into uh, growing, nourishing plants for Jesus. But dear fellow stumps,
there's still a battle ahead, you know. It's still raging within our country. It's a battle for religious freedom as real and compelling as the pilgrims faced. It is a battle for freedom around the world. Pray, dear stunts, for the holy seed to emerge. I love this uh, one uh, image that I'll leave you with here. This idea of, here am I, Lord, send me. Uh, of someone uh, with energy and passion to go out into the world and let people know of Jesus, their Savior. Uh, church of the Valley has chosen to be an evangelical covenant order church. And the key word there is evangelical. And there's two threads to evangelical. One is evangelical theology. We want to have our theology good. Theology well, theology right. Well, you can see how hard it is even to get a good word to describe our theology. We want biblical theology. Nothing less will serve. But also, we are evangelists and evangelistic which means we are people to have the words about Jesus on our lips. Those lips that for Isaiah were made clean by a purning piece of coal held in the tongs of an angel. Men and women, we have fiery words of grace and light and hope for the people who live around us. And it is our call, it is God's call to every single follower of Jesus, to share this good news with others. You know, if you find a great new restaurant, don't you tell everyone you know about the great restaurant you found? And if you've heard a wonderful story or joke, don't you tell it to your friends? And if you've heard a, a funny uh, dad, dad joke, like, um, oh, what's a good funny uh, dad joke? Dads are good at jokes with puns. How about, like, what did the... Um, what did the buffalo say to his son when he dropped him off at school? And then the answer is, bye, son. Bye, son, you get it. Anyway, but if you got funny stories, you tell it your kids when you tuck them into bed. And the best story in the whole world is about a God who loves people so much that he became human being in Jesus. And he lived to tell us what life, uh, what a good life looked like. And he died to let us know that our sins were forgiven. And he rose from the grave. And he sent the Holy Spirit to convince us and comfort us. And so even in these trying times, when this pandemic has shared us off and we're just feeling like a bunch of stumps, we know that there's a seed inside uh, these fearful, fearful bones, a seed of hope and life and joy to share with the world. Well, that's quite a call, isn't it? Aren't you glad that God loves you that much, would call you that much? And uh, let's stay close to Jesus this week. Stay close to Jesus. Look forward to seeing you face to face in the future. And God bless you. Let's pray. Lord God, bless us, watch over us, be with us, guide us. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Continue to sing together this morning. Sing, there's a grace. There's a grace when the heart is under fire. Another way when the walls are closing in When I look at the space between Where I used to be in this reckoning I know I will never be alone Let's sing it! Another in the fire Standing next to me Was another in the water Holding back the seas Should I ever need reminding Of how I've been set free There is a cross that bears the burden 
Where another died for me There is another in the fire It's like all my dead All my dead left for dead beneath the water You're a slave to my sin anymore Should I fall in the space between What remains of me and this reckoning Either way I will bow to the things of this world And I know I will never be alone There is another in the fire Standing next to me There is another in the waters Holding back the seas Should I ever need reminding The power has set me free There is a grave that holds nobody Now the power lives in me There is another in the fire There is another in the fire Oh, there is another in the fire Oh, there's another in the fire Oh, and I can see the light in the darkness The darkness bows to it I can hear the roar in the heavens As the space between wears thin I can feel the ground shake beneath us As the prison walls cave in Nothing's in between us Nothing's in between Give this to you. There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. He who was and still is and will be through it all. So come on, may in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. I know I will never be. Sing it out, I know, I know I will never be alone There'll be another in the fire Standing next to me There'll be another in the waters Holding back the seas Should I ever need reminded? Or could you beg to me? I'll count the joy in every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be And I can see the light in the darkness As the darkness bows to end I can hear the roar in the heavens As the space between where's thin I can feel the ground shake beneath us As the prison walls came in in between us, nothing's in between. Be another in the fire, standing next to me. Be another in the waters, holding back the seas. Should I ever need reminding? Could you bend to me? Count the joy in every battle. Where you'll be, count the joy in every battle. Cause I know that's where you'll be. Count the joy in every battle. Cause I know that's where you'll be. I'll count the joy in every battle. 
Cause I know that's where you'll be Amen Well thank you Thank you for being with us this morning We'll see you next weekend Take care, stay safe, we love you